Hi and welcome back. I know several people have been wondering when I'm going to get back to some Studio One content on this channel. Now that there's Studio One 5, I haven't really worked on Studio One content since version 3.2, which is when I did my last Groove 3 series. I think the book that I wrote on Studio One, Studio One for Producers and Engineers, came out way back in 2012. So I want to revisit Stereo to Mono. When you pick up Studio One, if you're coming from Pro Tools or Cubase or other systems where there's pretty direct ways to get in and out of stereo or mono files, it might be one of the things you ask, how do you do this in Studio One? Because there's not a right-click menu option to just quickly convert. So this example, I've got multi-track drums, which sounds like this. Pretty traditional recording with kick, snare, top and bottom. I have the overheads and I also have ambient mics, which are room mics left and right. So there's a lot of advantages to mixing this way, but there's just as many advantages to mixing with stereo files on the overheads and the ambient mics. And the way you do that is in the browser. There's not a right click, but you can go into the browser. So in the browser, you go into the Files tab, and then basically somewhere in here, create a folder. I call it Workspace. I have it for whatever reason in my loop library area. I create a subfolder called the Workspace, and I create a bookmark into that, which you can do by right clicking on it and doing create new tab from here. Then you just take the tracks you want to convert, for example, the ambient mic, select both of these, drag them over here. Now you've got the files, select both of them, and here is where you find that option. Right click, merge to stereo file. Once I've done that, it actually uses the L, if you have L and R in the file name, it uses it to decide which is the left and the right channels. Now this is a stereo file. Drag it right back into your song. And then at that point, you've got exactly what you had before, but in left and right format. At this point, I could take these out. So I'll do Shift T. Now we do this from the audio event. We're not dragging the track over there. We're dragging the events over there. So you do a multiple selection to select the events that you want to convert, drag them, into any folder in the browser, select both of them, right click, and then merge to stereo file. Then once you've got that, then take that, that one was the overhead mics, take that and drag it back in there. At that point you can remove the original ones. Now if you're concerned about doing this, then you might want to create a save point by going to file, and save new version. And then in here, create a save point, like before converting drums to stereo or something descriptive here. That way you can walk this back if for whatever reason you didn't like that effect. Now that I've got those in there, I can delete my overheads and I have done the conversions that I wanna do back into my mixer then it looks like this. And a big advantage of that is if you want to start to EQ these channels, particularly the ambience mics, you might want to put some aggressive compression or even distortion on there and then band limit or whatever, you can do that pretty easily at this point when you're working with a stereo file. Now, close the browser there with F3. One of the things I often do is once I'm finished with this process, I just go in here and delete all of this stuff. This is just workspace and I don't plan on reusing this. Now I might wanna leave the left and rights over there for a while, but typically I just take those out. I've done a save point on this, so I can get back to that. To take these out of your workspace, basically just hit them and hit delete. You get this dialog box and you can just say yes and then it takes those out. All right, so what if you want to go from a stereo event 
back to two mono events. We can convert that in a very similar way in the browser. If I right click, I can split to mono files. So once I've done that, click split to mono files. I've got my ambient left and right. Can just drag those right back in. So if you get your tracks in a way where they're in stereo and you'd prefer to work with them in mono, you have that option also converting through the browser just like this. Now one other kind of cool way to use stereo files is either with guitar amps that are recorded with two mics, typically an SM57 plus a Royer 121. It's kind of cool to create those as stereo tracks, not necessarily to pan them wide, but to use a balance control to mix them and then be able to do that on a single track. Once you get the balance you like, you can, you can burn it in by bouncing. I'm gonna demonstrate that by showing you the same idea using the snare tracks. So if I take the snare files, the individual mono snare files, take them over here, select the top, the bottom, right click, merge to stereo file. Now I have the top mic on one side and the bottom mic on the other side. That, you might do that once in a while. I don't know that I've ever done any mixing where I've done it that way. But what I do usually do is blend the top mic and the bottom mic, and that's one of the very first things you do on this. I believe more, normally you can commit to that sound. Same thing with the guitar amp. Once you've got the blend set, you can probably stick with it through the mix. So shift T to take those tracks out. I'll move my snare up here, and I'm going to use an event effect. So if I click here, down here, we have event effects over in the bottom part of the inspector. If I click enable, over here, I'm going to insert the dual pan control. I'll type in dual. To make this work, center both the left side and the right side by manipulating the knobs, or you can double click right on the value and type the letter C. So we're going to mono. This is working right on the event itself. That's all we need to do. Now if you manipulate the balance control, it'll still stay in mono, but you can adjust the blend between the top and the bottom mic on the snare. So let's solo the snare and I'll show you what I mean. So once you've got that balance set the way you want, then you still have your channel pan control because it happens at the event level. Then you've got the ability to pan it again later if you wanted, for whatever reason, to have your snare slightly off to one side, you could do that. Or if you just want to commit to that, you could either do a track transform here, or you could simply do the same thing, convert this track to the mono mode, and then do command B. So these are just a few examples of both how to convert from stereo to mono, mono to stereo, and a few applications of why you might want to do that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video very soon.